Okay, today we're talking about transversals and what I want you to think about today is there are a bunch of vocabulary words in here and so I don't want you to get um, think that it's too hard because the vocabulary words are big. Um, a lot of them are review and you can always go into the glossary in your book and see what those things mean and then check your notes. So don't get turned off by these vocabulary words because they mean pretty basic things. Okay? So, um, a transversal is just basically a line that intersects two or more other lines. So if you look down here, we have line A and we have line B, and those lines are parallel to each other. And if you look here, you'll see that line C in red is a transversal line because it cuts through two or more lines, and there are two lines here. Okay, so on this lesson, we're going to focus on transversal lines that intersect parallel lines. Okay, so here again, we have our transversal line C that intersects parallel lines A and B. And what I want you to notice here is that there are eight angles that are formed. So we have angle 1, 2, 3, 4. Do you see those? 5, 6, 7, and 8. All of those things are angles formed all of those numbers okay and we can call these things different things the numbers that are in blue are interior angles and the numbers that are in red are exterior angles and if you look at the picture you'll see that the interior angles are between the two parallel lines and the exterior angles are on the outside so that should be pretty easy to remember because interior is inside and exterior is outside. Okay, now here, these are some review things. If you look at angle one, angle one is an acute angle and angle two is an obtuse angle. And these two angles are supplementary because they measure 180 degrees. Now let's review that right here. So remember, an acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees. And basically, a supplementary angle is if you add these two together, you get 180. So let's go back. Okay? So I'm going to draw this line here. If I drew this line straight up, this would be 90 degrees and this would be 90 degrees on this side. So do you see this angle? Where it cuts, it cuts this 90 degree angle in half, basically. And then here you'll see it's bigger than that 90 degrees. Okay, so remember, if you get confused, you can always go back to your notes in the glossary. All right, so the other thing to notice here is that if you look at angle two and three, Angle two is obtuse and angle three is acute. And if I added these two angles together, I would get 180 degrees. So these angles are supplementary. Oh, and here's an example. So if angle two is 120 degrees, right here, angle two, if that's 120, and angle 1 is 60 degrees. Oh, sorry. If angle 2 is 120 degrees, then angle 1 is 60 degrees because 180 minus 120 is 60. Okay, that's not too difficult. So now figure out what the measure of angle 4 is because if you look here, look right here, angle 3 and angle 4 create a straight line again, so they must be supplementary and add up to 180 degrees. So if angle 3 is 60 degrees, what is the measure of angle 4? Well, 120 degrees. So 180 minus 60 is 120. All right, so here are some more vocabulary words. What you need to know here is angle 4 and angle 6 are interior angles because they're inside these parallel lines. Now they're also called alternate interior angles because they're on the alternate side 
of that transversal. Okay, so I have the definition right down here. Angle 4 and angle 6 are alternate, alternate interior angles. They're on the opposite sides of the transverse line. And that transverse line, remember, is also called a transversal. Okay, so if 4 and 6 are alternate interior angles, so are 3 and 5. Okay, an alternate interior angle is congruent. And basically that means it's the same measure. All right, and this is also review. We talked about congruence, congruency before. So if angle three is 60 degrees, so is angle five, because those are alternate interior angles and they're the same thing, okay? So that means that six and four are also the same thing. Okay, now we're gonna talk about alternate exterior angles. So the same thing, they're on the exterior and they're on the opposite side of the transverse line, line C. So C7 and 1 are alternate exterior angles. And so are 2 and 8 because, right, here they are. They're on the outside and are opposite the transverse line. So remember I said there are all these big words, but they really mean basic, simple things. Okay, and they're also congruent, so they have the same measure. Okay, wait, I'm gonna go back real quick. Okay, so I already know that this, I already know that angle one is 60 degrees based on our math we did earlier. So if angle one is 60 degrees, I know that angle two is 180 degrees, or I'm sorry, 120 degrees, because 60 and 120 equal 180. If angle 2 is 120 degrees, because it's congruent, the same as angle 8, angle 8 is also 120 degrees. And we're already given angle 1 is 60, and angle 7 is congruent to it, so that means that angle 7 is 60 degrees. So do you see why it's important to know these things? Because it makes things really easy later. All right, sometimes you just have to memorize things. Okay, so here we go. We have one more thing. Corresponding angles, they have the same relative position. So angle one and angle five are corresponding. So do you see that angle one right here is on the left-hand side of the transversal and above line A? Well, Angle 5 right here is on the left-hand side of the transversal and directly above line B. So those are corresponding angles. So we can look at some other corresponding angles. Well, obviously, angle 6 and angle 2 are also corresponding. So 3 and 7 must be corresponding. Okay, and that's all I have for you. So. On Moodle is the assignment, and these notes are printed out for you. And again, if you have any questions, just send me an email. Have a great day. Great day.